Hi everyone, today I have brought a question from the chapter Electric Charge and Fields, class 12. Now, the reason why I chose this question is uh, this question has appeared in JE examination in the year 2021. And the solution of this, which is available in internet, if you see the concept used or the formula used, is not in, present in the NCRT textbook. They say that they are using Gauss law. But the formula used doesn't look like Gauss law. So I thought let me derive that formula which they are using starting from the Gauss law which class 12 students actually know. Okay. Let me first read the question for you. It says the total charge enclosed in an incremental volume. Incremental volume here means small volume dv of 2 into 10 power minus 9 meter cube located at origin is dash nano coulomb so we have to find the charge enclosed in a small volume which is located at the origin if the electric flux density of the field is found to be as d equal to some function they have given right so they are calling this quantity capital d as electric flux density not electric flux remember and the function given is e power minus x sin y i cap minus e power minus x cos phi j cap plus 2 z k cap in the unit of coulomb per meter square. So at the origin there is a small volume whose magnitude is 2 into 10 power minus 9 meter cube. We have to find the charge in this volume. Since the volume is small the charge enclosed will be small so we can represent it as d cube. So this charge we have to calculate. Now in the solution they have used this formula where the left side is charge density which is charge per unit volume and the right side is this complicated looking formula. My question is how this formula comes, how, from where it comes. They will say it is Gauss law. Now how this is Gauss law? We don't uh, study Gauss law this way in class 12. So this is the problem. Okay. Now before I show you how this formula comes, let me show you that if you assume you know this formula, if you say that sir, I don't need to derive this formula. I don't want the derivation. I'm happy with this formula and memorize it. Then if you memorize this formula, then it is very easy to get the answer. Okay. So let me show you that part first. So this is differentiation of dx with respect to x. But if you notice, we are writing del, not d. So when we write del, it is del. Okay. D E L. Now, when we write del, it means basically it is called partial derivative, which means you have to just take normal differentiation of this dx with respect to x, but you have to treat y and z constants. So, when you do this differentiation, y and z should be treated as constants. Here, I think you can guess now, when you do this differentiation, you have to take x and z to be constants. And when you do this differentiation, you have to take x and y as constants. And what is this dx, dy, dz? These are the x component, y component and z component of this vector d bar. It should be d bar. Okay. And remember they are calling this vector as electric flux density. Remember. So let's do the differentiation. That's quite easy. So if you look at the x component, this is the x component, right? So if you take differentiation of this with respect to x, remember y should be taken as constant. So sin y will come outside because it is treated as constant. Differentiation of e power minus x is minus e power minus x, right? So minus e power minus x. That formula you should be knowing, okay? Differentiation of e power ax is a into e power ax. So here that a is minus 1. So it will be minus 1 e power minus 1 x, which is minus e power minus x, right? Now we have to take differentiation of dy with respect to y. Remember x and z are constant. So this is your dy. So let me show you dy is minus. Remember this minus you have to include. Okay. Minus e power minus x cos y. So if you take differentiation of this, remember x is constant now. So e power minus x will come outside. Differentiation of cos y is what? Minus sin y. Plus now you have to take differentiation of dz. dz is 2z. Right? So differentiation of 2z. Put 2z here. This is the dz, remember? dz. So if you put 2z here, 2 will come outside. Differentiation of z with respect to z is 1. Now you see this minus minus will become plus, right? 
and then this is having minus sign okay so this sin y e power minus x sin y e power minus x will cancel because this is minus this is plus so the density is equals to 2 unit of density is coulomb per meter cube right it is charge per unit volume and what is density d q by dv it is charge per unit volume so remember the elemental volume was given the small volume was given so the charge in that volume will be what density into volume density is 2 volume is 2 into 10 power minus 9 so that will be 4 into 10 power minus 9 coulomb which is 4 nano coulomb right so the answer is 4 right now we come to the main part of the video and that is how did we get this formula yes or no so let us try to derive this before that what is this d they call this as electric flux density well the definition of d is actually here it is permittivity of the medium times electric field in higher classes you will also learn that this is also called displacement vector because electric field is vector so this is also a vector quantity right displacement vector now the gauss law which we study in class 12 says that the electric flux phi through a closed surface is equal to charge inside the closed surface divided by epsilon naught where this is permittivity of vacuum so we are assuming the problem is done in vacuum now this represents flux through a closed surface remember what if your surf closed surface is very small then we can write the flux through a small closed surface as d phi right and the charge inside the small closed surface would be also small charge by epsilon naught agree now what is this d phi this d phi would represent the integral of electric field dot area vector through this closed surface remember okay so this flux represents this is the small flux through this closed surface which is a small uh, closed surface it encloses a very small volume so the flux is calculated using this formula that you must be knowing in your class 12 okay so remember this now let us take a case in which your electric field is function of only x Okay, so the electric field varies with x. So there is no y component of electric field, no z component. But as you move along x, electric field varies. So if I take a small volume here, okay, then here at this location of x, which I will call this coordinate of x as x, and this coordinate of x is x plus dx. So at this coordinate, let's say electric field is Ex and here electric field will be obviously different. So Ex plus Dex. So at this location, your electric field is Ex plus Dex and at this location, electric field is Ex. Remember, I'm assuming right now for simplicity, electric field changes with only x. So if I want to calculate the flux through this closed cube, cube is a closed surface, right? So what would be the flux? Remember, electric field is this side. And here for this surface, for this part of this surface, which I'll show you here, the area vector will be this way. And for this part, the area vector will be this way. Right? So what would be the flux through this surface? It is E dot dA, right? So it will be E, electric field here is Ex plus dEx. This is the electric field into area. Now what would be the area of this? If this is x, then this will be your y-axis, let's say, and this will be your z-axis, right? So, if I draw this cube separately here, for your understanding, then this part I am calling as dx. Because I call this coordinate x, this coordinate x plus dx, then this distance will be dx. Then this part I can call as dy, and this part I can call as dz. So what would be this area? This area dA would be length into breadth which would be dy into dz. Right? So electric field here is this. Area of this part is dy into dz. So this is your electric flux. Now what is the angle? Electric field is this side I have assumed. Area vector is also this side. So cos 0 will be 1. So no need to write cos 0. Right? So here cos theta usually comes remember. 
For electric field is along x axis, I have already assumed area vector we always draw outward, outward from the closed volume. So this is the area vector outward. So for this part of the surface, area vector and electric field vector are in same direction. So here cos 0 which is 1. So that is flux to this surface. What about flux to this side, this side, this part of the surface, this shaded part? Well, area vector is here, electric field vector is here. So cos 180 will bring minus 1. So minus will come. And what is the electric field here? That is Ex. And what is the area of this? That is also dy into dz. So that is the flux through this side and that side. What about other sides? Well, other sides are not important. Why, sir? Because for other side, if you look at the top side, area vector will be outward, upward. Because it is always perpendicular to the surface, right? So area vector is outward. And in this case, it is perpendicular to the surface. So it will be upward also. And electric field is along x axis, I told. So the angle is 90 degrees, so no flux. So there will be no flux through this surface, no flux through this surface, no flux through back surface, no flux through front surface. So only these two sides will contribute to the flux through this cube. So this is the total flux through the cube. Total flux through the cube. Remember it is a small uh, cube. So that flux according to Gauss law should be equal to charge inside this. Charge inside this can be written as density into volume. Isn't it? Charge inside this can be written as density into volume, which is dV, a small volume, divided by epsilon naught. So I hope you understood this is nothing but Gauss law, remember. So this represents the flux through the cube. This represents the charge inside the cube by epsilon naught. And charge inside the cube I am writing in terms of charge density. Okay. Now notice that this ex dy dz minus ex dy dz will cancel. So what is left? dex times dy dz equals to density. What is dv? Volume of this volume of this cuboid can be written as length into breadth into height by epsilon naught. So what did you notice? dy z, dy dz dy dz cancels out. So finally, what we are left with? So finally, we are left with d e x is equals to rho into d x by epsilon naught. Then if you bring this d x this side, you will get d e x by d x equals to rho by epsilon naught. Now to write in terms of d, remember I told d is what? Permittivity times electric field. That's the definition of d. You have to accept the definition. In vacuum, that this would be epsilon naught. So if you cross multiply this epsilon naught here, this would be epsilon naught into ex. And what would be epsilon naught into ex? It will be x component of d. So the density would be equal to d times x component of capital D, which is remember displacement vector or sometimes they call it electric flux density by dx. Okay, so can you see that this formula is very similar to this. Now this is in 1D or this is the case when electric field varies only along x. But electric field generally can vary along y also, along z also. So in general, when electric field varies along x also, y also, z also, which means d will vary along x also, y also, z also, then we have to write density equals this d should be replaced by del plus del dy by del z del y sorry and del dy by del z so this is how the formula comes okay in your higher classes you will learn that this quantity here in short can be written as this way so this operator is called gradient and this gradient vector is written as del by del x i cap plus del by del y j cap plus del by del z k cap. Okay. So if you take dot product of this with d bar, d bar will be what? dx i cap plus dy j cap plus dz k cap. So when you take dot product of these two, you know that x component and x component is multiplied. So you will get this. 
then y component and y component is multiplied right so you know that part about dot product right where a bar dot b bar is nothing but ax bx plus a y b y plus a z b z so i hope you understood how this problem can be solved using this formula but i just wanted to show you how this formula comes from the gauss law which you study in last year okay thank you